Breathing Space Fade and Frontier includes mature content such as adult language, sexual situations, violence, and substance use. Additional sensory contact warnings can be found in the show notes. I ain't got no home to go to, I ain't got nothing to sell, but my stars will never leave me, even when I'm sold to hell. I was born under a blue sky, and I'll die out in the black, when I'm gone, don't no one mourn me, cause my debts will drag me back. Come in. Um, hello. Captain Arturoskin? Miss Sanchez. Have a seat. Thank you. And thank you for agreeing to be interviewed. You carry a patch that's got weight, at least with me. What? I don't... Uh, Captain Cal's daughter hasn't actually given me a... Uh, sorry. It's just a thing we say. A metaphorical patch. Ah. I get the idiom. I do feel like I'm getting very far on Captain Cal's daughter's endorsement. I'll say. How do you find the L thing? Fascinating. Overwhelming. So many ships, so many people, so much going on. I had to make a physical chart of all the parties and events just to get the schedule straight. Although I'm sure you're used to all of this by now. This is actually pretty quiet for an L thing. Fewer ships is quaint. Really? I think some of the Hamagard, uh, the hardship captains, found reason to skip this one. Our uh, choice of venue doesn't meet all standards. I thought a lot of the L things were held in Ulco ports. Why would Arcturus be different? Well, it's one thing to roll up on a two-vac station and take the place over for a few weeks. Arcturus is big, biggest place in the belt these days. So, there are a lot of y'all around. All of us are, uh, comfortable in a place so public. I see. Is it okay if we get started? Sure. Thought we already had. This is audio only. Transcripts of our interview will be included in my papers when they are published. Is that alright with you? It's fine. If you don't mind, could you state your name for the record? Captain Yuri Arturoskin of the Peregrine Nation Free Trader Fort Sorrow into Joy. And can you tell me what you had for breakfast this morning? Are you a culinary anthropologist in particular? Honestly, I just wanted you to talk while I checked the sound levels on the recorder. Oh, right. Uh, just a protein bar and coffee. Don't really have time for a sit-down breakfast most days. Heavy as the head that wears the crown? There's just always something that he's doing. Well, thank you for making time for me, then. Interviews like this one are very important to my work. It's fine. Happy to help. The lieutenant who brought me in, she said, once the tape was rolling, to ask you about your grandmother. Did she? Let me guess, this uh, lieutenant's a short kid? Undercut? Cybernetics? Yes. That was my daughter, Evie. Would you like to tell me about your grandmother? Captain Hadamar Wright of the NMC freighter Cold Morning, if you want to look her up in the Terran records. She was first generation? Yep. She was right there at the beginning. Tough and sharp as a coffin nail. Tiny. Barely came up to here, but could completely fill a room with her presence. You find yourself just sort of falling into orbit around her. Did she adopt you directly? Did the accent give it away? <laughs> you sound more like a belter than most belters do. You'd think it'd soften after four years. No telling, I guess. A little while after retiring from her command, Adam needed some medical treatment that the family couldn't provide. So she heads out to Ceres under the radar to get it done. New heart and lungs go in, but they got her on recovery for a couple months. So to keep her strength up, she starts taking walks around the station. First time out, this station rat jumps her, brandishes a knife. Well, no snot-nosed kid gets to drop on Captain Adam right. Walking stick to the back of the knee drops him on his ass. And she breaks his nose for good measure. When he gets back on his feet, she says, Well, kid, seems like this station isn't as safe as I thought. Meet me tomorrow and walk with me. Maybe a big one like you will scare off any more trouble. I'll even pay for it. Did you meet her the next day? Easy money. Of course I did. She and I walked around that station every day for two months. Never did come across any trouble. When it was time for her to go home, she asked me, So where do you sleep at night? I had this little uh, access tunnel up near the reactor area. People knew it was mine. Never touched it. When I told her that, she made this face like something stunk. She said, if you come with me, kid, we'll get you an actual bunk. Now, see, the thing is, back then I was just a little monster. When she asked me that, I could feel something getting tight around my neck, like a leash or a noose. 
I said some words I won't repeat on record and stormed off. Found myself wandering around Ceres, same route we always took. And I found myself thinking. I was used to people going. I wasn't used to the idea I'd miss them when they did. I found her she was about to board a ship off station. Told her I wanted to come along. Fell right into her orbit. And that's how you found the peregrination? Yep. She dragged me back to the call and answer. Next thing I know, I'm officially her grandson. Spent the next seven years learning everything I could about living on and running a ship. Learned about our people. So from station orphan to peregrination captain, how long did that take? Hmm. Are you familiar with the idea of wandering? A bit. The peregrination philosophy that people should move from home to home for a while to find the right one. Yeah. Adoptees don't always do it. Makes sense from one angle. We were wandering our whole lives before we found the family. Adama, she thought it was important that I move on from the call. Find a place of my own, not in her orbit. Made it very clear I ought to go. Sounds like she was trying to help you grow. Yeah, but now that i got a little monster of my own to look after, I'm not sure I'd make the same call. Push so hard. Anyway, about that time a new ship was getting chartered. That is not an easy process for the family. It can be hard to find people for new ships. But had him his nephew, my Uncle Arturo, was set to captain, so I signed on to. End up officially as third mate, just to get some experience setting watches. Crew of 35, all pretty young and green. Got the hell christened as the do-it-yourself, and headed out in what was supposed to be an easy supply run to Karen. Just uh, carrying F and F out and empty on the way back. Supposed to be a cakewalk. So what happened? Juliet was the first to get sick. We thought it was Ulkoff, but... Ulkoff? Oh, yeah, Ulkoff. Not usually a problem on free traders, but hardships get it. Isolated populations don't really breed things like cold and flu well. So when a family ship that spends most of its time out in the black finally goes into port... The outside bugs get into a fresh population and everybody comes down ill. Cough, fever, then it burns itself out. Call it old cough. Uh, this wasn't that. Uh, yeah? Captain, Eddie Ann's here to see you. Acknowledged. Be out in a minute. Did you say this was Karen? Yeah. Oh. Juliet was the first to show symptoms. Then uh, Tio, Dagda, Alina, Arturo. Two weeks, and we're all coughing and wheezing and barely able to move. It was clear we had something bad. Got it on Karen. Suddenly, third mate makes me a senior officer. And I realize I got a decision to make. See, this hit us quick. Whatever it was, was virulent and severe. It might kill all of us without medical attention. But if we just show up someplace looking for help, we're liable to infect them. Make everything worse. Get more people killed. So I locked comms and helm. Left us drifting. No distress signal. No distress signal? Couldn't risk it. Anybody responding would have been in danger too. Nothing for it but to let the sickness run its course. You might have all died. I thought we would. Sure as hell felt like it. Those of us who weren't so far along tended to the others. I hung on as long as I could and then I crawled in my bunk, curled up tight, didn't expect to get out. 35 crew, 8 survivors. By dumb luck, I had made the right call. They figured out what was going through Karen and got it fixed, barely. But there was a port about how fortunate it was that no ships had visited there during the incubation period. Guess they didn't check the records close enough to see us. If we'd gone on to Triton or Ganymede, phew, would have been bad. I expect so. Karen's already regarded as a near miss to a stellar disaster so we fly back and after some med checks and some recoup time take on a new crew now everybody wants to join up 8 to 82 in one jump I go from acting captain to just captain and we were christened the hall forge sorrow into joy good name and Arturo skin can't forget the sorrow come on we've kept the captain in the look waiting long enough okay yeah. Been your friends lately? Yeah, via Blue Line. It's nice, cause Ish and them have kinda only ever known me as well this me, which is cool, but it's also sorta hard, cause they're, you know. I get it. They say the next time we're in port on Ganymede, they're gonna show me around. I think you'd like Ganymede. Maybe. 
I know I will if Ish and Gemma and Vel are the ones showing it off. Oh, hey, Captain. Little one. Excuse me, Tora. I know you two only just got started. It's no, it's just fine. I'm is... sure you. <laughs> Please, it's okay. I'm sure this is important. It is. Yuri, Ika is back. Right. So we're doing this? Yes. Right. Tora, I'm very sorry. Since I'm creating a hole in your schedule, I wondered if you might want to go sit in on the reading. Reading? The reading of the dead. Oh, yes. Absolutely. The Grow Something Beautiful is hosting this year. We can walk you there. It's on our way. Thank you. Yes. Let me just... Would it be okay if I recorded some of it? Mmm... It would be better if you didn't. People could be touchy. Besides, I don't think you'd find it very useful. Lieutenant, run ahead to the brave and let him know we're headed over. Then get back to studying for that engineering exam. Hi, Captain. Uh, but having something to review at a later date would be very helpful. It's just a list of names. I don't think it needs reviewing. But what about- It's a funeral service, Tora. Not just for those who have died since the last all thing, but every lost member of the family. All the way back to the beginning. We- I would be more comfortable if you didn't record the ceremony. It might be seen as... overstepping. Of course. And I know I've said this before, but I really do appreciate you getting me here. I know it's been trouble, and I'm just so grateful. I was convinced I'd never see an all thing in person, and in just the last few weeks, I've gotten to talk to so many of your people. I've learned so much about you. So you've gotten to see a lot? Yes. I attended five of the Ponch Sao parties, including the one on the Brave, and Captain Arturoskin was my 30th interview just this week. I am well on my way to compile it. <clears throat> That's the grow right there. Oh. Tell the ensign on duty that I sent you, and they'll take you to the reading ceremony. Be quiet as you go in, and don't expect to stay till the end. It'll be running for a few days. Right. Thank you, Captain. Tora. Right, Etienne. Thank you. I'll see you later. If you'd like. I'll be on the Forge Sorrow into Joy for the party this evening. Station time. You're... Uh, oh, Yuri? Of course you can come along. We'll be happy to have you, Miss Sanchez. Okay, great. Well, you two have a good... meeting? We will. Thank you. So... What's the plan with your little anthropologist? Shut up. She's not my... <sighs> I don't have a plan. Nobody said I had a plan. Right. Please don't smirk at me like that. I'll do my best. Give her your patch at least. How'd your calls go? Could be worse. I don't have your skills of persuasion, of course, but I get by. You? I'm optimistic. Hope you're right. I know being stuck here for months, putting out fires, wasn't your plan for the Forge, but it wasn't all that bad, was it? What? No, of course not. Captains? Ika! Oof. I heard you got your nibbling back. How are they? Things got a little complicated. They're fine, of course. Hello, Yuri. Lieutenant Trouble? Oh, sorry, it's a cap trouble these days, isn't it? Fiku, you intolerable roider. Let that go. I don't let things go. At my age, I gotta hold on to memories or they slip away. Memories are all I got worth holding on to. I hear that's not so true, Evie's father. Ika, I think we can make it happen. Ah, uh, yeah? We should talk. Over here. What's it going to take? First... We've confirmed that the offer from Vista Unlimited is still open. Yes, I saw. What is it going to take? You may not like it. I'm well aware of how compromises work, Etienne. Vent. You're familiar with the situation here on Arcturus, right? Unless something extraordinary has happened in the last week... What does it have to do with raising the interdiction on the inner worlds? Raising the interdiction isn't the problem. That will pass the council if put to a vote. Some of the younger captains have been champing at the bit for years to start working the Sunbird routes. And after the storm, it's a freighter's market down there. 
Free traders want to move in. Then what is the problem? Vista Unlimited. A deal that big. It looks bad. But those ships, Etienne. Hmm. <laughs> Four overbuilt hulls with reactors that are too... Battle cruisers, Yuri. Top of the line. The Ulko have no idea what we have stockpiled. If we get those ships, we can outfit them, and the family's navy will be the fifth most powerful in the system. Talk like that in front of the free traders and this deal gets dragged behind the woodshed. They don't want a navy, Ika. It will give us security. It'll give us a whole new mess of enemies. So, as it stands, if we take the proposal to the Council of Captains, they'll raise the interdiction on the inner system, but none of the free traders will sign on to work for Vista Unlimited. And as much as the other Haymagard captains want those ships, not enough of them can haul the freight needed for the deal. So, what do we give the free traders? How do we make going to work for the Inners a pill they can swallow? Arcturus Station. What? The governor has made an offer. An offer of an offer. Same thing. She just won't say it plain until she knows we'll say yes. Arcturus Station? Not the whole thing. As a way of saying thank you for our help in saving the station, the governor is offering us Omega Hangar. Not just family property. Sora. Our jurisdictional control. One short and curly shy sovereignty. Moving in with the Belters? If the free traders don't like the look of us doing big business with the Inners, then that... Oh... Just Arcturus, or just Vista Unlimited, would be playing favorites, but... Doing both is staying neutral. I see. <sighs> well, thank you both very much for trying. I know you arranged this on my behalf, and... You don't think the Hamagard will agree to it? No. I hold a number of proxies, but even with those... And if you convince every last free trader, we still need some of the hardliners. This will be a bridge too far. Etienne thinks we can get them round. How? They've been pushing for years for us to have less dealings with the Ulko, lest we all catch Ulkov and die. I think I could strong-arm some of them to agree to the Vista deal with the carrot of the ships. But taking possession of a cargo hangar of an Ulko station? They'll treat that like unrecycled water. Wouldn't be a cargo hangar for long. Go on. Arcturus was supposed to have 24 hangars, but not all of them were completed, including Omega. So we have to finish the Belter's work as well as- No. This means we get to finish it to our specifications. Think. We don't need a cargo hangar, but we could definitely use a dry dock. Did somebody ring a bell? I'll get you a napkin to wipe your mouth, Rebel. The Belters would never give us something so valuable. They don't think they are. They underestimate what we can do. The governor's trying to put a leash on us because we were so useful during the storm. Thinks she can make us responsible for a useless hole and we'll start coming around a lot more and bring all that lovely cargo we're known to carry. But... We've got the production capacity and know-how to turn that hole into... How'd you put it? The womb that will birth the next generation of family ships. Imagine it, Ika. With a dry dock, we can overhaul and retrofit the whole fleet. And we can build our own ships. Ones we design from the ground up for our needs. Do you think the Hamagard will be interested in that? <laughs> I certainly am. Damn, that is tempting. Tell me about it. Nobody builds the ships we want. The Inners build ships for traveling, not living in. The Adders never build for a crew bigger than ten people. Family engineers have gotten good at making the best of Ulko ships, but offer any of them the chance to design one from scratch, they'd move so fast you'd see the blue shift. And it's one of the last resources we depend on them for. Provided they allow us to keep it. All the more reason for us to get those ships. And strap some very large guns to them. <laughs> like those corporate types who keep a straight deal. They might. They might want to build a favorable economic relationship going forward. Perhaps. 
Perhaps not. As they say, never make a deal with Remy Rook. We'll give them the chance to be human, and if they do not, then we'll take what we are owed. Eager? Please don't tell me you want to raid Mars. Nothing so high profile. Do you remember when I said that business with Link got complicated? That complication is now my half-nephew, a dog walker. Someone who can acquire things. Let's hope he can do that quietly. Last thing we need to do is hand the energy cast us bell eye. Let them see that we will not be bullied. You treat the Ulko with undue fear, Yuri. Trouble, I am not too old to fight, but I am too old to see my family go to war. Update your charts, Yuri. We were weak. We are strong. Even the hearth ships are armed now, and trained. When was the last time we lost a ship to pirates? We have teeth, and we must have the will to bite. Respect is earned with blood. Is that why you want to bite, Ika? Protection or retribution? I see. You think my judgment has been... That I speak out of desire not to keep our family safe, but just to hurt the Ulko? Never mind, let's go back to... No! Let us bent the Atmo. I say my eyes are clear, and then you are about to say something to the effect of when you served on the forge, you weren't like this. Because we all know what happened after, and you dare to think that means I can't be trusted. Stop. I'm sorry, Trouble. You deserve better than the way I spoke. Just because I was... It doesn't mean that my feelings affect my... Of course not. If being hurt by the Ulko compromised a person's judgment, then none of us should be here. Ain't that the truth? I do, honestly, worry that I let my personal history interfere with my decisions in these matters. Glad to know I'm not the only one. Sign of a good captain, that is. Well, a good family captain at any rate. We never get the luxury of the impersonal. Ain't that the truth? Does it ever get easier, at least? Not so far. Yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> you two are very reassuring to a young captain. The best I can offer you is a drink. I could certainly use one. Me too. What makes you think you deserve one, old man? Shit. I certainly don't. But I know you're the forgiven type, Captain Dribble. To some, certainly. And you're lucky I've still got some residual fondness for you from my youth. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you can both stomach beet rum. The ensigns keep a bottle they think I don't know about behind that access panel to your left, Etienne. If you'd be so kind. Of course. Do we have glasses? I can call for an ensign. Give me that. Tastes like the inside of an old exosuit smells. Here. Thanks. <clears throat> Yuri, you're not entirely wrong about picking a fight with Yulko. And you're not wrong about us having the right, the need, to defend ourselves. We both killed plenty of pirates, and local governments are just pirates that can afford to hire enough lawyers. Yeah, your turn. I really would prefer a glass. You train this one, Trouble? I could only do so much. Both of you can eat vacuum. <coughs> Biku, that is vile. Yes. They use part of the backup 8-vac to distill it. It certainly adds some pungency. Mine just sneak into the galley stores, <laughs> then water them down to cover their exhaust. Your senior officers don't mind slowly weakening liquor? My exo plays quartermaster and has the galley crew reprocess it on the side. I figured I'd rather have that than an ensign accidentally drink methanol. Another option is make sure you have a couple of decent chemists on crew. Not all of us have your crew rotation, Yuri. I've been meaning to ask. That's on purpose, right? How do you mean? Your crew turnover. The forge burns through incense. 
more than any other ship. I used to think that it meant you were just a Kusipa. No offense. <laughs> Yuri? He's a puppy dog. I'm a taskmaster. You keep up a front with your crew, I'm sure, but you are as soft as a marshmallow. Yeah, only a wolf can smell a wolf. So then why do so many of your incense transfer? Mm, you're smart. What do you think? Well, if I was being cynical, I'd say that it's so that a lot of officers have gone through your command. Then they go on to other ships. Some even make captain, but still remember you as their captain and still see you that way. Subconsciously. Shit. <laughs> That'd be a good plan. <laughs> the Forge is an academy ship, Etienne. When my uncle transferred me there, he said, <clears throat> Yuri will straighten you out. It's what he does. I could only do so much. That's something you should be thinking about, Etienne. Oh. Training ensigns. A purpose, more than just being a free trader. <sighs> oh, cousin. What do you think all of this is? We are putting together the largest change to family law since Commodore Grandma died. It's been a monumental effort, and we're not even close to done. Five years from now, the family will be better off than we've ever been before. That's what I'm doing. Oh dear God, I created a politician. You realize what all of this will mean, right? More ships, more firepower. Either good relations or respect from the Olko. We won't need to hide our numbers anymore. The fleet could travel together again. Hmm. Perhaps. We stopped doing that for a reason, you know. Twenty-five all things ago. A lot has changed. And we'll change even more soon if we pull this off. We can push back the void. We can make it safe for the family fleet to be a fleet again. Did you know about this? Yeah. <laughs> I already got the 40-minute slideshow version. Fire you, I just roll with it. Do you think the Hammer Guard will go for the deal? I think they might, especially if I drop this fleet idea in the right ears. Misha, Himalia, probably Bron. More money from the inner system freight. The Omega Hangar. Maybe those ships? This is a lot, but this will be good for us. There is an appeal in the prospect that we stop hiding. Live openly. You want to show the Olko that we're not afraid of them? Let's just be visibly, unapologetically proud of who we are. I, uh... Not just a politician. A fucking leader. Spare me. I'm already on your side. Welcome to my life for the last couple months. I should go see some people and make sure my gut is right about who will be on board with this deal of ours. Do you want me to go along? We do not have all the time in the world, and it will be faster if I go alone. I will meet you at the Panch Sao tonight. The Forge is hosting us this thing. Naturally. I will see you both tonight. And I'm not sure if I should be thanking you, or you should be thanking me at this point. Whatever. Come here. <laughs> Yuri? Trouble? It would be futile for me to ask about their nickname, right? What nickname? I thought so. You actually think this is all a good idea, right? I didn't just wear you down? I've bashed skulls with folks twice as stubborn as you and I moved. I want what you want. The future for our family where we can live together is one. We spent so much time looking for each other in the dark. Those who come after deserve to live where they don't have to work so hard for it. Okay. Good. Thanks. How long since the storm? Four months. Four months. This is the longest I've been in one spot in a long time. What about you? 
Um, ever. I don't think I've ever been in one port this long before. Figured. Everybody else just got here, but the look in the forge have been moored this whole time. I'm glad y'all were here when a storm hit. I couldn't have done this alone. Station's nearly 100% now. All things only got a week or so left on it. I bet you're looking forward to getting back out there. Yeah, of course. Oh, that reminds me. You should take Abel and Romeo on the look. You done with those two? <laughs> they baked long enough. Abel will make a good sec officer, and you'll need him since Seb's coming with us, and where Abel goes, Romeo ought to follow. Is it... you know? Mm, let me know when they figure it out. Sure. That makes an even 12. Transfers? Mm-hmm. And twice that many first-level adoptions. Don't even know how many second-level are up. The Look and the Forge are all but officially sip ships now. Right. Yep. Etienne. I was thinking brother and sister, um, if that's all right. You're exactly the kind of older brother I'd want to have, but you have a particularly avuncular quality about you, so if you're more comfortable with uncle and niece... A few things would make me prouder than to be your brother. Good. Because as of last night, I'm already Evie's aunt, and it makes me very happy for my family webs to be tidy. You want to announce it at the party tonight? Do we need to? Let's make the forge and look sib ship thing official. That'll make people happy. Deal. Now, let's go change the world. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Breathing Space, Fading Frontier. This episode, The Real Thing, was written, directed, and edited by Scott Paladin. Yuri Arturo Skin was voiced by Scott Paladin. Tora Sanchez was voiced by Chris Allison. Evie Yuri's daughter was voiced by Jeremiah. Etienne Cal's daughter was voiced by Christina McLean. Ika Amity's kin was voiced by Rue Dickey. Our theme, Blues for the Black, was composed by Malcolm Frotog, vocals by Jeremiah, and lyrics by Scott Paladin. You can find links to learn more about our cast and crew in the show notes and more information about our show at our website, breathingspace.lawofnames.com. Breathing Space Fade and Frontier is a Law of Names production. We understand. They have left behind a hole. A gap. The world is lesser without them. But with our help, their words can ring out again. You can see their face, hear their voice. They might be gone, but you can capture their echo. When supplied with a corpus of their messages, journals, logs, video and audio, our proprietary neural meta network can extrapolate their personality, behavior, quirks. They can once more tell their story in their own words. It's not them. It's not a resurrection.
we can only offer you their ghost. An imitation. An echo. But sometimes, that can be comfort enough. Echo. A digital preservation. Memoriam premium. At the end of the road. There is an echo. Com B nine six one dash P six O two eight nine. Echo Memorial Service is a wholly owned subsidiary of Void Watch Security Holdings, widely greater Texas Republic. Echo Memorial Service operates in compliance with all relevant subsidiaries and subsidiaries accord Article 23 regarding digital privacy and information security. Echo Memorial Service reserves the right to sell all information assets pursuant to CAA 23.SS6A and is required by law to comply with all law enforcement requests pursuant to CAA 23.SS13.